if you uh, were looking to scare the hell out of me, you succeeded. Totally. I said, mm-hmm. there's no going back. Uh, I took two oaths. I took an oath to defend the Constitution of the people, and I took an oath to protect secrets. And when one conflicted with the other, I decided to go with the people. Now, I don't know what Sean Penn is going to say when they open the book to him, if they do. I don't know what Ah, he did. That's the question. With Obama in the White House, you know and I know, no one's throwing the book at a Hollywood movie star known to uh, cavort with criminals. We're speaking with... A real hero, in my estimation, Mike Levine, undercover agent for the DEA for so many years. Haven't seen him in a long time. I'll be back in a minute, right here on the Savage Nation. Let's go Tuesday on the Savage Nation. 24 minutes after the hour. We're speaking with Mike Levine, DEA agent extraordinaire. We'll get back to him in a minute because this breaking news story is hilarious and crazy. Headline, two U.S. Navy boats held by Iran but will be returned. So what's the story about? Are you ready for this? Apparently the girls in Obama's Girls Navy, they were training with small boats in the Persian Gulf. You know, the girls who can't drive boats are now the head of the U.S. Navy uh, Women who can't fly a plane is the head of the Air Force. And one of the boats broke down. One of our naval boats broke down with mechanical trouble. It runs aground. The U.S. troops are picked up by our enemy. I mean, our friend. I mean, our friend. I mean, our enemy in Iran. And Secretary of Hate John Kerry makes a call. He calls Foreign Minister Zarif. And Zarif says, don't worry, we'll get the, you'll get the troops back soon. This is the, U, the U.S. Navy. The once proud U.S. Navy, look what it's been reduced to. The motor breaks down, you hear? And our enemy now rescues them, and he's going to return the troops to us. Mike Levine, welcome back to the Savage Nation. What a world we're living in. Is it crazy or what? It's a crazy world, Mike. You you know know what I was thinking about? I I think your listeners would would see this analogy. I want to tell the story of Arnold Schuster. I don't know if you remember that. I was a... Wait a minute, wait a minute. New York, 1950s. What did he do? 1952. He was a 24-year-old salesman who spotted Willie the Actor Sutton. Uh, who Willie the Actor Sutton was the bank robber who made himself uh, famous when he was asked, why do, you, why do you rob banks? And he said, that's where the money is. <laughs> All right. Now, the, Willie the Actor Sutton was spotted by Arnold Schuster, who was just a walking around guy from Brooklyn. And he got all this fame. You know, I'm talking about notoriety for having fingered Willie the Actor Sutton. And a week or so later, Arnold Schuster was gunned down, mob style, found dead. His, 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 uh, his bloody body in those days used to put it right on the front page of the New York Daily News, and uh, there it was. Oh, yeah, I grew it, up on that great. I grew, I grew up on that great Victorian journalism. I loved it. it yeah, that's uh, it, you know, me too. That was my life as a kid growing up in the Bronx. Well. Here's the, the rest of the story is, Willie, Arnold Schuster's murder was a typical mob rub-out. Now, Willie, Willie Sutton was a bank robber. He had nothing to do with the mob. Many years later, I think three decades later, actually four decades later, when all the mob guys started becoming informants and stool pigeons, what they learned was that a big mob boss, and I just can't remember his name, saw, Willie, saw Arnold Schuster in the newspaper and saw that he fingered uh, Willie the Actor Sutton, who he, he didn't know at all, but it just pissed him off. And this guy happened to have any number of hitmen hanging around. They'll kill anybody. He's, he, you know, I had an attack dog in the military. I used to point my finger, and he would attack. Well, it's the same with these mob guys. They, they point their finger, and they attack. Now, he had Arnold killed. Wait a minute. Do you have any, other, you have any left over, any extras, one I can borrow? <laughs> I can train one for you. (laughs) Uh, So here's the point. What what Sean Penn did was he pissed off people who uh, have right now a thousand times the power of the American mob. Wow. And and hundreds, every one of them has a thousand hitmen, not only in Mexico, but on the streets of the city. 
uh, in, in the prison. But why would he? Here's what I'm going to get to with you when we come back, Mike. I could talk to you for another hour, and we're going to be with you another half hour. I think there's more to this story than meets the eye, and I think that Sean Penn has some protexia that we don't know about, and I want to delve into that. Something's wrong with the picture. He may be stupid, but he ain't crazy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. After the hour, at Disco Tuesday on the Savage Nation blasting out across America. I challenge anyone listening to talk radio these days to tell me there's been a better show in the last uh, 30 minutes uh, anywhere on the airwaves. There hasn't been. It's impossible. I haven't spoken to DEA agent Mike Levine in years. And here he is, still kicking. Michael, welcome back to the Savage Nation. I'm happy to be back, Mike. Uh, by the way, Mike, I, I looked up uh, in my records the Arnold Schuster thing because, uh, you know, I'm addicted to homicides. I cleared a lot of them as a DEA agent and how they happen, et cetera, et cetera, which goes right into Sean Penn. But the, the, how it was learned that uh, uh, Arnold Schuster was killed just because he pissed off a mobster. It was the, the mobster was Albert Anastasia. And oh. Joe, Joe Valachi who became a government informer, said that Albert Anastasia was watching an interview with a TV interview with Schuster and said, I hate stool pigeons. Whack that guy. All right, and so here's the question. Yeah. Will Sean Penn be seen as a stool pigeon? He didn't exactly give up uh, 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 El Chapo's position. He didn't come out and say, he's here's where he's hiding. Word is, I hate that guy. Forget what he is. Forget what's missing. The operative word is there's a million people out there who hate. Well, I say a million. Very bad people. Top people. My opinion as to what, how uh, Chapo managed to stay out and keep staying out is that he has information and, and hooks in the Mexican government that are powerful and that are afraid of him, too. So you're talking about uh, a hornet's nest of possible people who hate Chapo, fear Chapo, and the automatic uh, absorption of that hate, the inheritor of that hate, in many cases is going to be, in my opinion, because, I, I, again, I'm judging from living with these people, it's going to be Sean Penn. You mean, so let me, they don't think that, okay, he didn't really mean to expose him, but inadvertently he did. They don't think that way. All they do is connect the dots. Sean Penn, Chapo gets caught. Sean Penn is the finger. That's right. And you, you meet a few people like Chewy, the guy in, in Deep Cover, and you understand that uh, th there isn't any great analytical thinking here. It's the same as the same process. And that's why I brought up Valachi killing Arnold Schuster. Well, so let's go back to Sean Penn and the actress. The, uh, why would he do it? Does he not understand the danger he's putting himself in? And I read something yesterday from someone who said he put his whole family in danger. Well, you know, it may you, you can't sell any. I pray that nothing happens to the guy and nothing happens to her. Absolutely. I, I hate his politics. I think he's a first class uh, bad guy. But, man, we all hope nothing happens to him or his family. But what was he thinking or was he not thinking? I, my opinion is from knowing a lot of people... Uh, who are in that business and from understanding how they rely on lawyers first, which is a big, big, big mistake. Uh, I, 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 I was hired by a big pharmaceutical, internet pharmaceutical company down in Florida. I can't tell their name because I signed non-disclosure. Bottom line is they had hired lawyers to over, oversee their operations. And, and they brought me down because they were afraid of DEA. So I reviewed their operation, and all their lawyers, their very high-priced lawyers, told them, you're perfectly legal, you're okay, there's nothing they can do, nothing they can say. I reviewed them and said, you're going down. <laughs> They're going to bust you, and I'm going to tell you exactly how. You're vulnerable through your online positions. An informant is going to you know, penetrate one of your lawyers, one of your, one of your doctors. You, being the, the giganto pharmaceutical company that you are, you're an attractive target. You're media, which is Sean Penn is right now. He's a target. And what happened is, while they were reviewing my report, 
their biggest competitor goes down, gets busted, all the, C- the CEO and the whole board of directors for exactly what I told them is going to happen to them. Well, they should. Right, Mike, look, I have you on the show because you know the inside world of the drug cartels. No one knows it in, that I know of who knows it as well as you. Uh, okay, given that you know that this is liable to happen, surely he must have considered the possibility, didn't he? I don't know who he talked to. I, you know, I have no idea. No, 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 I'm talking common sense. Wouldn't common sense have dictated inside Sean Penn's adult brain, hey, if I do this, I'm putting myself and my family in danger? Wouldn't he have thought that? He, maybe he didn't. Again, you're talking about people. He was probably more frightened of lawyers and indictments and government coming after him than anything else. And, you know, when, when uh, you start watching the left hand, you get hit by the right hand. And that's the way life right. is. Right. So, okay, so the, his defense is already saying, all the liberal lawyers from NYU were saying, oh, he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't finger him because he wasn't, you know, then they say he's a journalist. He's not a journalist. He's an actor. We know that. Anyone who writes for the San Francisco Chronicle or Rolling Stone is not a journalist. We know what they are. But nevertheless, he can't hide behind, behind being a journalist. Did he have an obligation to give up the guy's position? Yes or no? A legal obligation, yeah. But if you hide behind the, uh, the status of journalism, well, then you get a courtroom debate. You may get indicted. So when these lawyers came up with this definitive, you're a journalist, you can hide behind the, the, uh, the, 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 the journalistic, I forget what, which, uh, which, am- which amendment to the Constitution. First Amendment. First yeah. Amendment, basically. He's hiding behind the First Amendment. Sean, you can't right, so, the First Amendment. Do you, are you, uh, Michael, look, the first thought is I, I think... I think oddly. I don't think the same way other people think. Maybe it's a product of my upbringing or my, my way of looking at life. I think there's something more to this story. And I think that this guy is as crazy as a fox. He needed more fame. He's a fame junkie. And I think he knew the danger he would go into. So he has some kind of protection somewhere. And I don't know what that might be. I don't know which side of the law he has the protection on. My guess he has more risk from the dark side of the law than the light side of the law, to put it that way. And I think that maybe he worked a deal out in advance to not be harmed if he did that. I don't know. I don't know, but something's wrong with the picture. It is absolutely, we don't know everything, because if I knew more about what happened, what was said, who was at the meetings, I might tell him, you know, right now, head to a country where there's no extradition. I might. I don't know what happened. I don't know the logic. I know that the lawyers, the words that the lawyers are using are defense attorneys' words. They're, they'll be in line with their hands out if and when Sean is busted for their million-dollar retainer fees. Well, now, here's something up, interesting okay. that someone brought up. Here's something that someone brought up to me two days ago when the story broke about the Rolling Stone article. He was dating a very big movie star. Was it Charlize Theron? Was that who he was dating, I think? And, and she dumped him not too long ago, just before this interview. They were seen in this picture and that picture, kissing and hugging, they're in love. You know, the standard New York Post stuff, you know, with Bahamas and Miami in the water. Couldn't keep their hands off each other. Then all of a sudden we hear she dumps him. Someone says to me that's because she knew he was crazy. She knew he was putting himself in danger. She wanted no association with him for fear that she'd be harmed. That's what, that's what this woman said to me. Yeah, I mean, that's conjecture. The thing is with me, Michael, I'm a, I'm a court-qualified expert, so I can't ever make an opinion on conjecture. I can say, yeah, well, you know, it could be, because it'll, that would kill my career. I don't do that. I, I talk about evidence, and I talk about... Well, the evidence indicates that something's wrong with the picture. Nobody goes into a, a hornet's nest like this without wearing webbing. Where's his webbing? Well, I, I'm agreeing with you in the sense that there is a huge, dark downside to this. Now, from that point on, what's missing, and I all, I'm also very aware that there will be a tremendous drive to indict him. And to, to, wait, to indict Sean Penn? That's correct. And the woman. That, that drive may come from Mexico. They may be indicted in Mexico. Mm. Now, <laughs> I don't know. Mexican law. I don't know Mexican law well enough to know, but I do know that there is a strong possibility. I've heard uh, legal people saying there's a strong possibility Mexico will indict him. And if they do, they're going to ask for an extradition from the United States for violation of Mexican drug laws. 
It, uh, and oh, it's a different set of laws there than here. Okay. I don't. I don't know that you have a first a first amendment.